Hello and welcome back, and that's right, it feels like an eternity, but finally we are seeing the very, very latest generation of those new E18 SSDs, and finally, yesterday, SG21, we saw Seagate formally announce the Fire Cuda 530, an NVMe PCIe Gen 4 SSD that is actually bringing us a lot of that performance that we've been waiting a good couple of years for. Now, don't get me wrong, the previous generations of PCIe Gen 4 SSDs that we have talked about until recently were still pretty good. Let's face it, in the past we've talked about the Firecuda 520 a lot for console gamers, PC gamers, and even some of you editors on the latest generation of NAS, and there's been the other ones as well, such as the Samsung 980 Pro. Those have kind of been the top of the tier SSDs in NVMe right now. Where the 530 takes things even further is with that E18 controller we talked about previously, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Let's slow down a pinch. Uh, SG21, although Seagate was talking about a lot of different things for gamers there, and again, they've released a whole bunch of kit in the last 18 months, the real focus here was the SSD. Now, arriving at 500 gig, 1 TB, 2 TB, and really surprisingly, a 4 TB NVMe there. These four NVMe M2 SSDs all take advantage of that Fizon E18 controller. Now, for, throughout this video, I am gonna look at my notes to make sure I cover everything, but hopefully everything will be on screen as well. But the 500 gig and the 1 TB model are going to be single rank or one-sided, whereas of course the 2 TB and the 4 TB are going to be dual rank there. And I'm really impressed that this is gonna be arriving with 4 TB on the scene, but that said, it is coming at a price, with each one respectively arriving at four, uh, approximately this is the uh, reported price point of $140 at the bottom there, $240, $490, which is more than a PS5, and a staggering $950 for the 4TB. They know what they are selling here. They also know they are the first to bring this to market. Now, for that kind of price tag, you wanna know what you're getting, and you wanna know why on earth is it better than buying a Fire Cuda 520 right now? What has it got that this doesn't? Because we have been recommending this SSD for quite a long time. So, first and foremost, as mentioned, it is PCIe Gen 4 times 4 but the performance uh, available in that bandwidth, you know, if you look at PCIe Gen 4, so uh, for each, um, that's a PCIe Gen 4, which is 2,000 megs approximately, and then times 4 it gives you a potential throughput of 8,000 megs. And now, each time they bring out these variation of SSDs, it's about filling that available bandwidth. So although the previous generation, again, of PCIe Gen 4 times 4 SSDs had that bandwidth to play with, they couldn't saturate it, they couldn't fill it as much as they could, and this is as close as we've come yet, thanks to that E18 controller, which I think should have come out last year, but I think the pandemic, I think, you know, semiconductor shortages, all that stuff we talked about, caused all of those delays and kept kicking it down the road, and it's not just for Seagate either. So, the reported performance is a read between 7,000 and 7,300 megabytes per second read, which is astonishingly high. Obviously, the 7,000 is that uh, single rank ones, the 500 and the 1 TB, and the 2 TB and the 4 TB have got a reported maximum performance potential of 7,300 megabytes per second read. In terms of write, which, let's be realistic, that's the one that people care about the most, at the bottom end there at 500 gig, it's reported 3,000 megabytes per second, then 6,000 megabytes per second in the middle, and the ones at the top end are reported right of 6,900 megs. And bear in mind, that's just straight. If you if they enable the connected feature of the PS5 to um, uh, use the internal storage, that is going to be, uh, be uncompressed. Imagine what it's gonna be like when it's compressed. It's gonna be able to really take advantage of that hardware. Now, it's worth mentioning there are, of course, the standard features and functionality of SSD and the kind of specs that people look out for, your MTBF, your IOPS, uh, your data rights per day, terabytes written, we will talk about those. Uh, for I should say for the IOPS, um, again, for those first two models, there's a reported 700,000 IOPS with the larger drives going up to a million, apparently. A million IOPS. We're there, everyone. Well done, we can all go home. We've cracked the seven figures. Um, the device also arrives with five years of warranty, which is absolutely standard, I believe, for an enterprise or prosumer-grade SSD. But what's really cool is much like 
the 520 series. It also arrives with that recovery services, Seagate Rescue Recovery, three years of data recovery services, which I know a lot of people, when they hear about it in NAS, are less bothered because they think, well, it's in a raid and I've got all these other things. But in SSD, particularly for gamers, I can see a lot of them worrying about an SSD and the amount of endurance that they're going to go through. That data recovery practice is going to be quite handy and it's a nice little bonus extra to lump in there. I say bonus extra, these are not cheap SSDs. Now, we already just sort of touched on it there. Terabytes are in and data rights per day. This is where I'm going to have to look at my notes. Um, all, all four models of capacity have got that 0 0.7 data rights per day, which means the drive has the capacity to be completely written to, to a full 0 0.7 full capacity every single day for its lifetime. That is what data rights per day is, DWPD. But what you really want to know about is how that translates to terabytes written. So at the 500 gig model, that's 640 um a terabyte, uh, a date, um, terabytes written in its lifetime at the 1TB, that's 1,275 terabytes written in its lifetime. At the 2TB tier, it's 2,550 terabytes written. And on that top end 4TB model, 5,100 terabytes written in its lifetime. And unless you're going to be doing something crazy, you know, like your chia mining, please stop doing that. If you are going to look at stuff like that, that's still an incredible endurance factor for this SSD. Now, I'm going to be doing a dedicated PS5 video because I think a lot of these tech specs don't translate very well into that. And I think a lot of people on that side are just going to want to know when a PS5 is going to embrace stuff like this. Because if they are going to enable that feature this summer, just like they said they would, this is the sort of SSD we're looking at there. At SG21, they did lots of testing um, utilizing crystal disk and disk benchmark and stuff like that, showing disk performance speed. Not only, you know, in of itself, the 530, but how it compared against the 520 that came before it. Now, with regards to release, I can't imagine Seagate are going to be particularly, you know, forthcoming with this information unless it's coming very, very soon indeed. And in light of shortages right now in terms of NAND, I know this is using 3D TLC NAND. I should have touched on that earlier, earlier 176L. Um, I will also highlight that I think these have been in development for long enough that if you see stock, buy the stock if you think they're going to need it. I know I'm going to be using them here on the channel and I recommend them for you as well. But again, this is just a little preview of what we saw and learned about this driver SG21. And again, I will be making another video just for the PS5 got players. Uh, about this very very shortly but do click like if you've enjoyed this video click subscribe if you want to learn more we will be talking about this specific ssd a lot in the coming months so if you want to learn more about it or whether it's you know worth that you know 4tb for near enough a grand that's large money those are large numbers guys so do subscribe if you want to learn more about this drive before you take the plunge but thank you so much for watching and i shall see you next time